good good morning to all of you am i listening am i am i you are not seen, your screen is seen, seen here okay, am i audible yeah you can continue okay. your presentation okay thank you very much uh, okay i am dr sarvas sarma from national academy of medical science i will first i like to thank dr arjuna gupta for inviting me in this very big uh, program so that I can speak something about the contrast media in this uh, CME. CME. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, myself. I'm Dr. Saras Sarma. I'm the head of department in National Academy of Medical Science Bid Hospital. This hospital is the largest and oldest hospital of Nepal government. It is 133 years old hospital. And Today, my topic will be about the safety considerations in the use of contrast media management and its adverse effect. And I will also speak about the main contents of my presentation will be about the contrast media introduction and about the safe, how safe is the contrast media, adverse reactions of the contrast media, how to manage the contrast media reactions, and some studies done in national and international about the isosmolar contrast media versus low smaller contrast media. So that the participants must learn at the end about the how to identify patient at increased risks for adverse reactions to contrast media, assess the common clinical features of adverse reaction to contrast media, evaluate the person and its treatment. This will also be able to apply what are the preventive measures that we have to take before giving the contrast media to the patient. We must know the definition of contrast media. Contrast media are the substance that we use so that we can delineate the margin between the area of interest and the surrounding structures. So there must be some properties of contrast media. The contrast media should be easy to administer. They should be non-toxic. They are stable compound. It should be concentrated in the area of the desired area. It can be rapidly eliminated when we, it is necessary. It should not be carcinogenic. And the viscosity for administration should be appropriate. It must be tolerated by the person. It must be cost effective. These are the properties of contrast media. About why we must know about the contrast media? Because about 80 million CT scans and 40 million MRI has done worldwide in a year. Of these, 50% uses the contrast media. So we must know about all detail about the contrast media. Mainly my presentation will focus on the identity-based contrast media. However, there will be short introduction about the MRI contrast and ultrasound contrast media. In POSI, what is classification? What is positive contrast media? If we give the contrast media after giving the contrast, if the organ or the structure is more opaque, that is more white than the surrounding structure, they are the positive contrast media. If after giving the contrast media, the area if it is appears black, then the surrounding structure, it is negative contrast media. There are some examples of the contrast media which are positive. They are the iodine-based contrast media are positive. Water insulin, non iodine based barium sulfate is a positive contrast media. Next is gadolinium, is a positive contrast media. Less opaque, that is negative contrast media are carbon dioxide, oxygen, air, water, they are the negative contrast media. Now we must classify iodinated contrast media. There are two ways of classification of the iodine based contrast media. One is uh, um, either it is ionic or non-ionic. On the basis of ionic and non-ionic, we are dividing into ionic contrast media and non-ionic ionic contrast media. Among ionic, they are maybe monomers, they may be dimers. Among non-ionic, it, it may be monomers or it may be dimers. 
And water solo, it is iron based contrast media, is, as I talked already, they are the water soluble contrast media. They are chemically 246 triode benching of ring. On the clinical basis, we classify iodine contrast media into high osmolar contrast media, low osmolar contrast media, and iso osmolar contrast media. What does iso osmolar contrast media mean? Our blood, our blood serum, plasma contain the osmolality of around 300 million osmol per kg. If the contrast media has around 300, isosmolar con uh, osmolarity of the contrast media, then they are isosmolar. If it is around 500 to 800 milliosmol per kg, they are the low osmolar contrast media and high osmolar contrast media means they have osmolarity around 1500 milliosmol per kg body weight. So I have classified on clinical, I have given here the clinical classification of iodine contrast media. High osmolar contrast media, as I talked, they have the osmolarity of more than 1500 milliosmol per kg. And the low osmolar contrast media can be ionic or can be non-ionic. Ionic, low osmolar contrast media has the osmolarity of 500, 800. Mm -hmm. Similarly, non-ionic, monover, low osmolar contrast media has osmolarity of 500 to 800. And non ionic dimer, their iso osmolar contrast media has osmolarity of around 290 to 300 mSmol. Why it is important? Why clinical classification of uh, iodine contrast media is important is that high osmolar contrast media have more uh, uh, reactions, more uh, complications than lower osmolar contrast media. Example of high osmolar contrast media is ditriazole salt. We commonly use urography and gastrography. They are high osmolar contrast media. Whereas low osmolar contrast media, that's ionic acid, and low osmolar contrast media, that is non ionic, I have to iopromide, iopamidum. We commonly learn, we commonly uh, use this monomer LOCM. As our uh, as a company brand, as Omnipack and Ultravis. This Omnipack Ultravis has LOCM has lower reaction than HOCM. We must know about this LOCM. And in dry in dimer iodine is the dimer non ionic contrast media that we use. Similar, I have classified um, gadolinium based contrast agents that are used MRI. They are also classified in linear and macrocyclic, ionic, non ionic. In ionic, linear, we are using magnavist, and non ionic, we are using OmniScan. These two compounds are linear gadolinium based contrast. Next is macrocyclic contrast, can be ionic and non ionic again, and they are also classified into ionic and non ionic Next is barium contrast, positive contrast media. Barium, previously, it was you, it is used now also in many centers. We use barium to visualize the GI tract. But nowadays, use of barium is decreasing, declining. In our country, too, it is declining. Main thing we must know about barium is it should not be in a suspected perforated case. Barium must not be barium in a patient with, who are suspected to have perforation or we have suspect who are suspected to have intestinal obstruction because barium is insoluble compound as it passes to the perforation into the peritoneal cavity, it will cause peritonitis and it will cause barium granuloma and it may harm the patient so that we come, must know that barium we must not be used if we suspect patient has perforation of intestinal obstructions. Next is, I'll so briefly talk about the ultrasound contrast agent. Ultrasound contrast agents are recently used. They are very costly. They are mainly used to visualize the tumor, so the vascularity in the tumor. There are some characteristics of the ultra, 
on Transmedia. This will be easily introduced in the vascular system. This will be stable for the duration of diagnostic examination. This will have low toxicity. This will modify one or more acoustic properties of tissue that can be detected by ultrasound imaging. Main characteristics of contrast used in ultrasound should be, they should be encapsulated. The size should be around three to five micron. Very small size because they must pass through the capillaries in the lung. Next is whole body human dose of 0 0.2 to 2 ml. This will contain around 10 million bubbles. And this will increase the echo from blood by the factor of 500 to 1000. There are some example of it. They are libo based and eco based. What, fa what, uh, what facts about reaction of the contrast media? Non ionic contrast agents cause less discomfort and fewer adverse reactions compared to ionic agent that I talked already. And around two to seven in thousand people show acute reaction to lower osmolar contrast media. Around four in 10,000 people show severe acute reaction to the lower osmolar contrast media. And one in under 70, one like 7,000 people show fatal reaction to lower osmolar contrast media. That is, fatal reactions are very rare if you use, use lower os osmolar contrast media. Facts about the gadolinium based contrast reactions. Gadolinium based contrast agents have few reactions as compared to iodine based contrast agents. They cause adverse reaction in one in 20,000 people. Most reactions are mild form. And severe and light thigh and allergic reactions are very rare with gadolinium based contrast agents. Now we must know who is at risk of developing acute adverse contrast actions. Those, those patients who have previous reactions, when we give second time iron based contrast action, they are at risk of developing the contrast actions. All severe allergies and reactions with food are also at high risk of developing the contrast actions. If a patient has history of asthma, bronchospasm, they are at high risk of developing the contrast reactions. History of, if the patient has history of cardiac or renal disease, they are prone to develop contrast reactions. Especially those aged over 60 years or less than five years have chance, high chance of developing the contrast reactions. If a patient has contrast reactions once, if we do after second time the, with the same contrast agent, any investigation, then the patient may have five to six fold increased chance of developing the contrast reactions. <clears throat> how now we must know how important is serum creatinine level um, while doing investigations with contrast agent. Based is estimated glomerular filtration rate to know the kidney status because it accounts for age, gender, and ethnicity, but it is not possible in the African test. So there are some indications for it. knowing the level of creatinine before administration the contrast agent. They are hypnic contrast agent is older than 60 years. You must always see the level of creatinine. History of kidney disease as an uh, adult, uh, as a tumor or renal transplant or any other disease, you must see the creatinine level. If there is family history or renal failure, always ask for creatinine level. Diabetes treated with insulin or other any other medications. Hypertension. If the patient has paraproteinemia syndromes, just as, such as multiple myeloma, ask for creatinine level. And current use of nephrotitis drugs, chemotherapy agents, then you must see the level of creatinine before doing any investigation with Itinerated based contrast agent. Mechanism of acute reactions is not clearly known, but there are two types of reactions due to contrast, itinerated contrast agents. One is idiosyncratic, next is non idiosyncratic. Idiosyncratic reaction can be anaphylactic or anaphylactic, right? Anaphylaxis is IC immunoglobin E mediated, anaphylactic is non immunoglobin E mediated reactions. 
Next is chemotoxicity of physiological is non idiosyncratic reactions. We can see in coming slides. Anaphylactic reactions, it is always dose independent. Almost it does not depend on the dose. Anaphylactic reactions are unpredictable and involves release of some mediators. Occurs within minutes of contrast injection, whereas non IC injected and acts through direct activation of mast cells to release stamines. Next is physiological or chemotoxicity reactions. They are dose dependent. Mainly it depends on the viscosity, iodinicity, and osmolarity of the contrast. Cause imbalance of homeostasis and molecular toxicity. And mainly it affects cardiovascular, respiratory, urinary, GI, and nervous system by iodinated, uh, by the in, uh, contrast media, and it is chemotoxic or physiological reactions. Chemotophysiological and allergic type of reactions should be differentiated because physiological reactions, if there is physiological reaction, patient may not need pre-medication in the future while doing the contrast agent. Whereas if the patient has allergy type of reaction in the previous investigation, patient may need pre-medication with steroids before doing next investigation. There are some general, uh, some mild, moderate, severe features due to contrast reactions. In physiological, mild, in general, there will be frosting, warm, chill, sneezing, whereas in severe, there will be seizures. In cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, nervous system, similarly, they have the effect. In allergy type, mild, moderate, severe, and mild, there will be urticaria, skin edema, mild nasopharyngeal symptoms, rhinonia, nasal congestion, similar type of reaction can also be in cardiovascular gastrointestinal system. Mild reactions are usually self-limiting, and but sometimes these reactions may progress. Therefore, patients should be observed briefly to ensure recovery. Wait till the patient gets recovered. Moderate reactions such as bronchospasm with no or only mild hypoxia and are usually Cell limited, and if there is not acid with hypoxia, and they may be self limited moderate reactions. Whereas, the, the, however, they may progress to life threatening reaction, so you must wait the patient till they recover. Severe adverse reactions are rare, they are unpredictable and potentially fatal. Therefore, they must be promptly and treated to prevent permanent morbidity or death. Okay, severe reaction you have to manage medically, which we can show you. And what is contrast induced nephropathy? A sudden deterioration in renal function that the acute kidney injury with the recent intravascular administration of contrast media in the absence of another pathology or event. Contrast induced nephropathy and contrast independent acute kidney injury. Independent acute kidney injury are clinically undistinguished. Acute kidney injury that is CIN, contrast induced nephropathy, is considered if it considers the following facts. One is absolute serum creatinine increase of greater than or equal to 0.3 milligram per day. Next is increase in percentage serum creatinine of greater than or equal to 50%. That is 1.5 times higher or higher than the baseline percentage. Next is urine output reduced to less than or equal to 0.5 n per kg per hour for at least six hours. These are the three points definitions of acute kidney injury or CAN after using contrast and the contrast and it is contrast into nephropathy. Mechanism contrast induced nephropathy is mainly the physiological, whatever with the pre renal or renal, whatever the mechanism, is affected direct tubular toxicity. There may be medullary hypoxia, there may be tubular obstruction leading to contrast induced nephropathy. This is the mechanism of physiological type of contrast reactions. What safety measures we can take? Most reactions occur within first hour of contrast injection, but so may occur after one hour to one week. 
Delayed reactions are more common in young adults, or men, and patients with previous allergy reactions. Prompt dialysis is important, so be opted after contrast injection if the patient is already on dialysis. Enough hydration before after contrast administration is the most. Iodine contrast media can be slightly warm to 37 degrees centigrade at the body temperature for better effect and decrease the complications. Now, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, it is a complication of iodine um, gadolinium based contrast agent. They occur with GBC having severe chronic acutine in a patient with severe chronic acutine novella. Gadolinium dissociates from its cells and bind to the alliance in the body and gets precipitated tissue, causing fibrotic manifestations. Mainly that gadolinium nephrogenic fibrosis mainly affect the skin. Other include lungs, pleural, skeletal muscle, heart, pericum, and kidneys. We can divide the gadolinium based contrast as in its three groups on the basis of its risk factors. High risk agents are gadolinium and uh, gadopentidate, dimeglobin, magnabist, and omniscan. In group two, internal risk agents, and group three, we keep low risk agents. How to reduce the risk for NSF? First, you identify the patient at risk, those dependent on dialysis with severe chronic renal failure without dialysis or with acute renal failure. Consider alternative diagnostic studies such as CT scan or ultrasonography. About use of GBCA whenever possible. We have to use low dose as possible. Next, do not re-administer gadolinium-based contrast agent for several days to one week after initial dose. What are the features of what we see in a patient with NSF? They are fatter skin plaque, the skin becomes covered stone. They're really marked in duration thickening of the skin, beauty orange appearance of the skin, and there will be joint contracture. This is the feature of NSF. We, pre, we must know something about the pre-medications. Oral pre-medications in a patient with allergy suspected uh, to have uh, allergy, we, have, we must give the pre-medication. Oral pre-medication is better than IV pre-medications because of its lower cost. It is more convenient and greater evidence that is supporting the literature. 12 or 13 hours per oral pre-medication may be considered in the following settings. In an outpatient, we can keep prior, uh, with a prior allergic like an unknown type of contrast reactions to the same class of contrast medium. In an emergency department, also we can give oral pre-medications in an emergency department in patients if delaying for 12 to 13 hours for oral pre-medication does not delay other treatment decisions, then we have to go for oral pre-medications. We have to give accelerated or IV pre-medication in an outpatient if patient has come for investigation without taking oral pre-medication and his time cannot be rescheduled for the next day, then we have to give accelerated IV pre-medication. Next is in university department or in person, we have to give pre-medication in the form of IV if when we delay the, uh, if for oral medication then in such case, there will be adverse effect to the patient due to delay of the treatment decision. So that in such a case also we give IV pre-medications. What are the corticosteroids used in pre-medications? They are hydrocortisone, prednisolone, methylprednisolone, and dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is a long-acting, most potent drug, corticosteroids, whereas hydrocortisone is 
lipoprotein and short acting corticosteroid. What are the elective pre medications? 12 or 13 hours oral pre medication. They are prednisone based. 50 milligram prednisone by mouth at 13 hours, seven hours and one hour before contrast administration. Plus, we can give 50 milligram diphenhydramine, IV, IM, or oral one hour before contrast medium administration. Next is pre metalprednisone, 32 milligram metalprednisone by mouth at 12 hours two hours before contrast medium administration, 50 gram diphenhydramine can be added later. In accelerated pre-medication, this is emergency pre-medication, we will use the pital prednisone, 40 mg IV hydrocortisone, 200 mg IV immediately. Then later we will give diphenhydramine IV, 50 mg one hour before contrast medium administration. Next is dexamethasone, 7.5 mg IV immediately. We can give also diphenhydramine 50 milligram IV. Third stage is that prednisone 40 milligram IV or hydrocortisone 20 milligram IV plus diphenhydramine 50 milligram IV. We can choose any one of it in case of accelerated pre medications. But to know why administering accelerated IV pre medications, we are giving the IV pre medication, but we must know this IV regimen should be given at least four to five hours duration after administration to be effective. It, that, that means it should be given around four to five hours. It should be started four to five hours before the contrast exam, examination or before giving the contrast. What are the drugs that we have to keep in our emergency department while uh, in, in our uh, emergency tray in our investigation room? They are oxygen. We have to keep the oxygen either in cylinder form in the, or in the pipe form. There must be anti stabbing in the epinephrine IV or IM, the dose varies. Atropine IV, 0.6 milligram to one milligram slow infusion form. We have to keep beta agonist inhaler. There must be levitalol, nitroglycine. We must have normal saline or in our lactate solution, and we must have digital at the anti -convulsions. These are some contrast reactions and the drugs that we use for the treatment. In acute non renal hypersensitive reactions, hydrocortisones we can give. If the laryngeal if edema, we have to give epinephrine, IV, or IM. If there is a hypotension with yeah, only hypotension, there will linger lactate. If there is a hypotension with bradycardia, we have to use atropine. If there is hypotension with tachycardia, we have to give epinephrine. In hypotensive crisis, we use the labitalol. In polymer edema, will elevate the head of bait, we will give the fresamide. Similarly, in seizure, there will be diazepam and hypoglycemia will use dextrose. In pregnancy and lactative patients, IDT contrast media across human placenta, but till date we have, we have not found any tetragenic effect. Only a small percent of IDT and gadolinium based contrast as an excellent in breast milk, but it is better to assess risk versus benefit give, before giving contrast medium to pregnant and lactating women. It is be also better to stop breastfeeding for 12 to 24 hours after contrast administrations. And we post something about the metfor use of metformin while giving the contrast media. Metformin is oral anti hyperglycemic drug. There are, and we, there are three categories of using the metformin. Category one, category two, category three. Here we must learn that. If the normal renal function, if the patient has normal renal function with no known comorbidities, then there is no reason to discontinue metformin. In category two, normal renal function with known comorbidities, patient has hypertension or other cardiovascular disease or other comorbidities, then we have to stop metformin for 48 hours. After the investigations, if the patient is stable 
and there is no there is no integral risk factors for renal damage we can start metformin after 14 hours but in category 3 patient has renal dysfunction then we must stop metformin for 48 hours and we can restart the metformin only if repeat kidney function test or renal function test is normal. In category one and two, renal function is normal. In category one, renal function is normal. There is no comorbidities, no need to start metformin, stop metformin. Category two, normal renal function with comorbidities, we have to stop metformin 48 hours. After that, if the person is stable and there is no any risk, factor to damage the kidney, we can start the metformin. In category three, there is always renal dysfunction. We have to start the metformin and we can only repeat the metformin after the renal function test is done. So beta blockers increase, also increase the risk of anaphylactic reactions and arrhythmias by three times. So that we must take care of the patient while using you know, for a long period of beta blocks. Patient receiving interleukin 2 immunotherapy for cancer, the delayed reaction may come after two years in a patient interleukin using interleukin 2. So this reaction can occur even immunotherapy drugs is administered as long as two years before, uh, before uh, iodine contrast media administration. So that we must take the history, better history of the use of interleukin 2 before administration the iodine contrast media. Thyrotoxicosis can occur due to use of iodine contrast media. Symptoms may aggravate in pre-existing thyrotoxic patients. Symptoms may appear in the patient with quieter. And the contrast media may also interfere with the thyroid function test. There are some neurotoxicity due to iodine contrast media, especially high osmolar contrast media. There can have convulsions. There can be uh, cerebral hypoxia, hypotension, cardiac arrest. There can be transient cortical blindness, brain and cord edema, extra due to neurotoxicity. And in few one slides, I'll compare the IOCM with the LOCM. IOCM is isosmal contrast media with that of lower osmal contrast media. There are a few studies done. And this first one done by Aaron and from et al. in 2010, it is a meta-analysis and they have seen around 30 research st studies and found that use of LOCM and IOCM, or is, use of IOCM is statistically non-significant compared to LOCM. Second study was done in 2021, CFO, in December 2020 and December, in different outcomes between isosmolar and low osmolar contrast media in myocardial infarction with renal impairment. And they concluded that isosmolar contrast media use does not prevent further incidence of dialysis compared to LOCM use in EMI patients with renal impairment. Next investigation was also done, although it is a old research in 2006. They also concluded that there is no decrease in CIN with the use of IOCN. But as you know, theoretically, more the isosmolar contrasts to that of isosmolar contrast to that of isosmolarity to that of blood, the contrast reactions will be less. Now I'm coming to almost end of my presentation that in conclusion, Always keep the emergency drugs ready. Prefer isosmolar or low osmolar contrast agents compared to high osmolar contrast agent. Prefer non adding metrocyclic gadolinium based contrast agents. Stop metformin 48 hours before the contrast administration if acid with comorbidities or abnormal renal function taste. You must stop breastfeeding for 12 to 24 hours after the contrast administrations. Avoid barium study in perforation if perforation is or obstruction is suspected. Rush the patient to emergency severity occurs. Different studies show there is no significant difference between LOCM and IOCM in causing contrast-induced nephropathy. 
these are my reference. I have taken most of this uh, data from ACL manual and contrast media 2021. And there are other uh, references too to prepare these slides. And at last, I'll thank you very much and have a nice day from this Himalayan country, Nepal, with a few uh, images of Mount Everest. Thank you very much for listening to me uh, carefully in this half an hour presentation. Thank you very much and namaste. Thank you.